Good day, Matrix of 2024. I come back again to you with analytical geometry, a paper two topic. One topic that people always think it's easy to pass, but let me tell you one thing. I don't want to scare you. Analytical geometry has got two ways. It's too easy to pass if you do follow instructions. It's also easy to fail if you just answer questions randomly. So please be careful when you are looking at analytical geometry. So I'm going to take you through this topic, which is a paper two topic, and you will see your expectations. We are also looking at allocations, expectations, as well as questions. So we need now to get ready for this. Now, analytical geometry, we are looking at plus or minus 40 marks, and we can have 43 maximum, you can have 37 minimum. The main things that you need to look at is the distance formula. You need to know how to use it. You need to know how to substitute it. And the distance formula is already given there in the formula. If you have forgotten it, you just go and check. The only thing that you have to remember is that we are saying the difference x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 all squared, then you add, you find the square root, you know that. Gradient formula, you also need to know. Once you start with x1, or once you start with y1, you must start with x1. And please, many learners have got a mistake of starting with change in x over change in y. That is a misconception. And once you do that, it's a wrong formula, and we regard it as a breakdown. Midpoint, you must know the only formula that where we add the coordinates and divide by two. Collinear points, you can use that. You can do that using gradient, also using distance formula. Like when you are using a distance formula, you are saying points that are on a linear, on a line A, B, and C. So using distance formula, AB plus BC must give you AC. Using gradient formula, it's M of AB is equal to M of BC is equal to M of AC. So you can a use either of those two. But normally this one, it tends to be long. Uh, we only use it if maybe you've been asked to to find the distance and you only have to calculate the distance as the one, one, one distance after one length, maybe AC, then you can check. Then equation of a line, there's a mistake, always a challenge with people when they find equation of a line. If the equation says write it in terms of MX plus C, we tend to forget to write this equation after getting C. So normally to avoid that, to avoid this using losing marks there, you can, to avoid using losing marks there, you can use this formula instead of using uh, y equal to mx plus c, you can alternatively also use this y minus y1 equal to m into x minus x1. So that's what you can use. And you see that if you use this one, you will not have the stress of forgetting to substitute or, or C in the equation. Then another thing which I want you to be very careful of, every time they say find the equation of a line, always start with write this. That's a tricky. Write this, secret about this. So that if you don't substitute C, you will get all your marks because you have already told us that I want to write I want my equation to be in that form. So if I substitute and get 2x uh, plus c, then I substitute two points that I have, then I left it as y c equal to 3, for example. It means, if, even if I don't put it back, uh, but because I've written this, I will get my full marks. Angle of inclination, you did that in grade 11. You need to remember that, and please, Take note that sometimes you are given the angle already, just like the one that you were given in this trial paper. Right. Another thing that you must be uh, 
familiar with and be prepared to work with is the po properties of polygons using analytical geometry. You must know that. Analytical methods. You also be asked the equations of a, equation of a circle. Remember there are two types, center origin, center AB. A tangent to the circle. A tangent is already y equal to mx plus c. That's the tangent. And you must know that a tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So before you do anything, your, your gradient of tangent is always equal to 1 over gradient of maybe negative of radius. Let's put a negative there. It's supposed to be negative there. Then you must know that the product is minus 1. Then you also need to work with Euclidean geometry axioms. Integrate Euclidean geometries and theorems into analytical geometry problems. So you, you will see as you do that you can get a question from another topic that will be used in analytical geometry. So please take note of that and be prepared for that. So let's look at this question that was um, in your trial paper. So uh, as you be answering, you need to look at uh, the keywords. Quadrilateral A, E, B, C is drawn. Coordinates B of B are three is to four. So you need to check, are they there? You, 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 you indicate, are they there? Then you underline that, okay, I do have them. Then F, five is to zero are the X intercepts as well as G, O. So there is my, then you need to know, and please take note, this O is not for the origin, so it's not zero, zero, if you are asked, and then there is your G. And what is common in these all three points, it means that they are X intercept. And X intercept, you know that if, it's, if we talk of X intercept, already you must know that Y is zero. Just like when we talk of Y intercept, your x is equal to zero. So those are the things that you need to take note of, just like in functions. Now, a, b, and b, c, respectively, those are the lines. h is given, h is given, our h is given, and the point is there. Is a point on the line a, c, a, b, c, th is theta. So there is your theta there, you must check it. Then, uh, Area of triangle A or B, F. So you are given your, your area of this triangle. It's given. So it means that in your questions, you are being prepared that there might be a question that will ask you area. So you need to know that. Then, and an inclination line of line AB is 45. Look, there it is. The angle is given. Therefore, you must know that I can get my gradient of AB because remember from grade 11 you were taught that tan theta is equal to M. So this is your M which is your gradient. Then if you are given this is 45 then once you put you want to find your gradient of AB it should be the same as tan 45. Even if you press your calculator you see that it's 1. So already the gradient of this line you already have it as one. So those are the questions. And once you do this, oh, then there's that one also. HC is to, to HA. One thing, remember, you are not doing Euclidean geometry, but you are expected to answer that question. So it says HC is equal to 2AH. So I can now simplify and say HC over AH. This is what you are familiar with. Write it like that. You are free to write it like this. So here, my HC and AH, I can say this is 2A. And please don't use any variables that you have. And this is your A. So we are going, and that makes, that makes AC, before you even work it out, that makes AC to be 3A if you add those two. So AC is already 3A. So you now know that I've got this, and you, once you are given this ratio, it's, that is proportional theorem that is going to be applied. So be prepared for that. Now let's look at the questions. 
Calculate the length of BF. Leave your answer in simplest set form. So simplest set form, you will see that when you get your BF there, substituting, it gives you root 20. Don't leave it like that. You can just remember, how do we get that? We multiply 4 times 5, then you see that it's 2 root 5. That is the simplest set form. Two marks for that. So obvious, one mark will be for substitution, one mark will be for the answer. Then calculate the gradient, you know, change in y over change in x. It's always advised that when you say gradient of bf, rather write y of f minus y of b over x of f minus x of b. Then from there, you can substitute nicely and get your answer. Calculate the size of theta. If we can go back, there is my theta. Now, look here. When I do my theta, I want to... There is my theta being formed in this triangle. So I can get this angle because I already have gradient of BF from the previous answer. We got the gradient here to be minus 2. Oh, using a pair, minus 2. So when you have got your gradient there, you can get your angle of this angle size, which must be more than 90 degrees. Then, as you can see in this triangle, we have got this angle plus this angle. It must give us that angle. That's the concept that you are going to use that will assist us to get theta. So then prove that HF is parallel to AB. Now look at your HF. There is my HF. There is my AB. I already know the gradient of AB. So you calculate the gradient of HF. So once you calculate it, you will see that your M is 1. Your M there is 1. We already saw it. So that, then you can see that these two gradients are equal. So once they are equal, therefore they are parallel. And that now takes us to this triangle being, uh, if we are to apply our, 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 our proportional theorem. So I'm going to check now. It will take us now to look at this triangle. If you can see this triangle, it has got now two parallel lines. And remember here, we had already said this is 2A, this is A. So using proportional theorem, this is 2B and this is 2B. I said this is B, sorry for that, sorry for that. That becomes B only, sorry, my apology. Right, then already remember we have got BF, our BF, we have calculated it as um, 6 root 5 earlier on. In, um, ah, it was 2 root 5 earlier on. B, it's 2 root 5. We calculated BF as 2 root 5 from number 1, which is 2 root 5. Okay, then if this is 2 root 5, and remember BC using now proportional theorem, and I can see now that I can say you can use any, from here, you can use any theorem that you want. You can say BC over BF is equal to your AC over AH, which is equal to 3 over 1. And you must write there proportional theorem. Then, once you write proportional theorem, you also need to remember from the previous question that there is a question that was asking what type of quadrilateral is this. So this is a kite that makes BC equal to AC. Therefore, if I say BC over 2 root 5 equal to 3 over 1, therefore BC will give me 6 root 5. But because BC and BF are equal, my AC is also 6 root 5. So this is now 6 root 5, 6 root 5. So you already have your answers there on that. So basically, you, that's how you are getting your uh, BF, and that's how you are bringing back 
it analytical sorry and euclidean geometry into analytical geometry so you need now to apply and integrate that then from there once you get that you already have your answers for 3.46 then calculate the area of quadrilateral a of a o f c now if you check here if you check here with the area one thing that you need to remember is that i now have this i now have this as 6 root 5 6 root 5 so i've got as isosceles triangle this one i got it as 71,5 this is also 71,5 because they are equal so these are angles opposite equal sides so the first thing now I don't have to stress by looking for height because if you are to stress to look for height you need to find AB but for you to find AB you also have to find a perpendicular height which becomes time consuming so we are just going to use our area equal to half AC BC times sine theta or sine C let me say let's use sine C there so once I use sine C it will tell me that I've got my, I need to find my angle first, which is for this side, which will give you something like 36,83. Then once you get that, you use that, which sign C, then you substitute and get your, your answers, 6 root 5, sine 36,86. Then you get your answer, then once you get your area of this, because the area that we are asked to calculate is this one. We need this area here, which you need to, to subtract from the 12 that was given. So this area, which is 53, it gives you 53,99, you need to subtract 12, then you end up with 41, comma. 5,99. Is that okay? All right. Then from there, we need now to look at that's how you do that and you get your 19 marks. Then this is the circles. Please un read and understand the questions and check and look at this question 4.2. Maximum length. Remember, maximum length. It means that you are applying and they are assigned. So what you have to do, complete your square, check since it says length of radius look at what you get from your radius and that's what you are going to use to get your maximum length once again let me um, say practice practice will make everything perfect you attack a topic at a time and you get all the trial papers from the province the target low hanging fruits keep calm wish you the best is that okay we we need to know that we are always uh, in control of whatever you are doing. Thank you very much and wish you the best. Thank you very much.